Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you here today on the Cabral Concept. Excited to share with you a brand new show that truly differentiates fasting with intermittent fasting versus autophagy. So autophagy is something that we're beginning to hear more in mainstream media, which is amazing. It's literally the thing that enables us to stay healthier longer and achieve greater levels of anti-aging based results. Fasting, though, on the other hand, gives us a whole different set of benefits. And believe it or not, you can actually be in autophagy, but not fasted, right? But when you're fasted, you're typically taking advantage of autophagy and the hours matter. I want to share with all of that with you here today. It really is an amazing topic. And after today's show, it's a short show, but after today's show, you'll know how to get better results with your diet in less time. So let's go over that right now. If you haven't really, if you haven't familiarized, familiarized yourself as much with fasting, I have a whole category of podcasts on this. You can go to stephencabral.com slash IF. It takes you to all of my intermittent fasting shows. We actually have a podcast just dedicated to it on Spotify and iTunes. Uh, and literally, it's just called Intermittent Fasting. So you'll be able to find that. But fasting is a voluntary period of not consuming any food. And in order to reach this fasting period, it's typically 12 hours. Intermittent fasting is basically 12 hours. And many people go 14 hours, some go 16 hours, some go even longer. But for a daily intermittent fast, and I have, I have a whole show on how long you should fast daily, uh, a weekly, once a week, and then a quarterly, and then maybe even a yearly, which would be a little bit longer. But let's just talk about a daily basis. Many people are, they're stopping eating around 6 p.m., maybe 8 p.m. at night, and then they're just going 12 hours, so 6 to 6, 8 to 8, or they're maybe going 14 hours, which is about what I do. I go 6 at night to about 8 in the morning. That's 14 hours. Works really well with my body. Might not work well with yours. You might want to do a little bit more, a little bit less. Uh, and some people, of course, go a little bit longer. They might go a full 16 hours, which... Probably the healthiest version starts around five or six at night, so more hours before midnight, before you're going to bed. I'll talk about a little bit more about that towards the end of the show. Uh, and then they're just adding on then whatever they need. So if they're going six to midnight, that's six hours. Okay, how many more hours do you need to get 16? 10 to go to 10 in the morning. So you're still able to get in enough meals, enough nutrition, et cetera. But regardless, fasting is a period of time of not eating. What is fasting most beneficial for? Well, it's really beneficial for weight loss, for improving blood sugar levels, uh, lowering levels of inflammation in the body, improving mental clarity, unless, of course, you crash in the morning with low blood sugar. That's why I, I stop my fast around 8 a.m. Uh, and improved overall heart health, unless, of course, you take it too long for too far. And I have studies on that. So I'm always giving you I, I share with you the truth. That's the thing. I have no agenda. So I share with people that if you skip breakfast and you go to lunch and you do that long enough for years, it is actually detrimental to your health. There are studies now, not small studies, studies that show all cause mortality increases, namely cardiovascular death, if you skip breakfast, not of course when you're in your 20s, but as you get older. So don't skip breakfast, right? You can, you can go a little longer in the morning, but don't put that much stress on your body. Believe it or not, fasting is a stress. Now, can you skip breakfast one day a week? Absolutely. Can you do it every day? Well, the research doesn't say that that's a great idea, okay? But the thing is, fasting does work. Intermittent fasting does work, and everyone should be doing it. It's just the hours change based on the individual. All right, so as the body begins to get into a fasted zone. There's no food coming in. And so what it does is it typically, as long as blood sugar levels are down, tops it, taps into body fat, and it allows then for autophagy to start to take place. Now, what is autophagy? Well, autophagy started to become more popular, more popularized, I should say, in around 2016. It's always been around, right? It's always been part of our body. Ayurvedic medicine's been talking about it for 6,000 years, right? Didn't use the name autophagy, but what does it mean? Well, it means autophagocytosis, right? And so what is that? Well, it means self, right? Your body sends phagocytes throughout the body to break down old cells, old white blood cells, kills viruses, all sorts of things. And it basically recycles that material for fuel in the future. 
And that is because no f- new fuel is coming in. So it says, okay, let's start to break down old tissue. We'll use that. This is an amazing way to stay young, to stay healthy, and to keep your body uh, essentially cleaning house on a daily basis. So autophagy is something that we don't want just once a week, once a quarter, maybe when you're doing a a seven-day functional medicine detox, but actually something we want on a daily basis. So here's the thing. Whenever there is nutrient deprivation, or we're exercising, or we're at a caloric deficit, all of these things can improve autophagy. And autophagy, as I shared with you, is the removal of old and damaged cells, uh, reduces inflammation in the body, it it's improves lifespan. We've at least seen that in animal studies, so it's beyond just mice-based studies. It's in animal studies now. We're pretty sure it happens in humans as well. It's it, you'll, We'll be able to prove that out soon. Uh, improved overall metabolic functions, improved immune system function because it kills off the weak uh, white blood cells, the old white blood cells, and starts to regenerate new ones. Now, I have many shows on autophagy, and again, you can find those at stephengabral.com. Uh, slash IF, and then you can just go to stephencabral.com slash podcast and just type in autophagy and you'll see all the different shows on that. But it's really important for overall healing for the body, uh, anti-aging, a way to kill cancer cells naturally inside of our body and much more. So here's the thing. Typically, autophagy kicks up around 18 to 24 hours and is at its strongest essentially between 48 and 72 hours. That's why every 12 weeks, every quarter, I do recommend the Equal Life functional medicine detox for seven days because you get a full basically 72 hours. That's what I want for you. It's what I do for myself. I do it the um, I do it January. I do it the first week of April, right before the 4th of July, and then I do it right after Labor Day. That's basically, those are how I do my quarters. So it's winter, spring, summer, fall. And, and if you don't know anything about it, I have a free course on it. So please take the free course. Literally, there's no cost at all. It's at stephencabral.com slash courses. Check it out. Just check the one on, on uh, detoxification. Completely free. Nothing to purchase. Teaches you exactly what you need to know about detoxification why it's so important. 20 years ago, you'd be laughed out of a conventional medicine doctor's office. Now, of course, all of them talk about it, right? Why this is so important for the body. All right. So now, what's the differences? Well, there's, and the reason why I did the show, there's actually a big difference. Yes, when you're fasting, you move towards autophagy. But when you hear the 18 to 24 hours, you're like, well, I don't really get into autophagy unless I'm fasting for 18 hours. It's not true. It's actually de- dependent on an individual. As blood sugar levels begin to drop, especially more with ectomorphs and some mesomorphs, not as much with endomorphs, you get into autophagy faster. You burn through your fuel faster. You have a faster metabolism, right? Like that's the truth. But everybody is in autophagy to a degree based on what's called basal autophagy, which is a term that nobody's really using. I'm going to do a separate show on it. But our bodies in all of their innate wisdom and beauty begin to upregulate autophagy every single night. As it begins to get dark, hopefully your cortisol levels are dropping, your melatonin levels are rising, you've stopped eating a couple hours before bed, fantastic. Hopefully it's not a huge meal. I'm going to give you that tip in just a second. Then autophagy begins to increase. So cellular cleanup As long as you're not eating that big meal before bed, which unfortunately, many people were preaching for many years, the OMAD diet, one meal a day diet. I talk about that as well. They're like, well, I can get a longer fast and I can do, um, you know, more intermittent fasting and get more deeper into autophagy. Okay. But again, in Ayurveda, they talked about this as well. Biggest meal shouldn't be before bed. It should be mid-afternoon or or basically one o'clock or so. And so we have to understand is that you can't trick your body. You're never going to be able to trick your body. And so I'm going to share just in a moment how you can take advantage of autophagy for much longer than just the overnight hours and you don't need to be fasted. All right. So here's the last piece I want to share with you. We talked that autophagy kicks in and fasting really kicks in as blood sugar levels begin to drop. And that's because insulin levels begin then to drop as well. They stay lower. So if your blood sugar levels aren't high, your pancreas doesn't need to produce a lot of of, um, insulin, which is great, right? So now... Insulin is is low, and so now autophagy increases. But also there's this thing called mTOR. mTOR 
mammalian target of rapamycin, you don't need to know what that means, is it's basically an indicator for anabolism, building the body up. <clears throat> so if you're consuming a good amount of protein, mTOR increases, you can repair tissue in the body, build your muscles, etc. right? But if mTOR is low, then what happens is something called AMPK, you don't need to know that, increases, AMP kinase, as well as autophagy. Here's the interesting thing. When you're fasting, no food coming in, mTOR starts to decrease, autophagy starts to increase. They're on basically an inverse right ratio, an inverse curve. And so here's the fascinating thing. When you wake up in the morning, you can actually consume green juice, you can consume uh, plants, you can consume even some low glycemic berries. You can consume coffee. You could consume green tea. You could consume certain fats. You can even do this at dinner. And you stay in autophagy because those plant-based foods have a weak effect on mTOR. So, and I've, I've done shows on this. I've given you the research before on Friday Reviews. So what happens is you can continue to stay in autophagy, which is why many cancer-based institutes, even the world-famous Dana-Farber in Boston, Massachusetts, recommends green juices. And the reason is, is that you can consume those and stay in a state of autophagy. I've talked to you before about the fasting mimicking diet. What is it? It's basically 400 calories from olive oil, 400 calories from vegetables. And you're doing that for, I've given you the whole protocol before, about five days. So yes, you're eating 800 calories a day, but there's no real protein. So mTOR stays low, autophagy stays high, AMPK st stays high. So you're not truly fasted, but your body somewhat thinks it is because it's missing all of those amino acids that would allow you to then turn on mTOR to a greater degree. Why does this matter? Because if you are someone that does not want to just not eat or not eat breakfast, you can actually eat a plant-based breakfast. Now, again, I have nothing against protein. And if your goals are to build muscle and really transform your body, I agree. You'll get better results if you're eating more protein, right? Like that's, I'm not disagreeing with that. I never have back in my natural health, my, my natural bodybuilding days. It wasn't healthy. I'll tell you that I was eating 275 to 325 grams of protein a day. Do you need that much? No. But did I want a surplus of amino acids in order to keep repairing and building muscle? Yes. Did it work? Sure. I weighed about 35 more pounds than I do now. More, most of it muscle, not all of it, but most of it muscle. And so I'm not saying it doesn't work, but at some point in your life, you're probably going to want to make the switch to being more towards anti-aging, longevity. You can have your protein at lunch, certainly. Yeah. And you can do it at dinner. Would it be even better more at lunch? Yes. But again, I, I'm part of this civilization world as well. I come home, I have dinner with my family and we definitely have protein without a doubt, right? Chicken or fish or whatever it is that we're eating. So I'm not saying that, but the fascinating thing is this, that you can have your plant-based proteins, you can have plant-based foods, you can keep the glycemic load lower, and you can still take advantage of autophagy. Not to the highest degree as when you're fasting, but you can still get the benefits. So that means we can actually be in a state of cellular recycling and autophagy, even if we are not fasted. Coffee enables that. Green tea enables that. Plant-based foods enable that. And again, this does not mean that I say that you should go completely vegan. I'm not saying that. You can if you choose to. What I am sharing is this, is that there are ways to work with nature, to continue to essentially detox, repair the body by allowing you to eat certain foods that still don't kick you out of this natural process of your body. This is why for many years, Ayurvedic medicine, we've recommended fruit, something easily digestible, cleansing for the body essentially at breakfast, hydrating. We've recommended a smoothie with a daily nutritional support powder forever in our practice. And it's gotten hundreds of thousands of people, if not now over a million people 
amazing results because you are getting the nutrients your body loves with the water without the animal-based protein, which you can then have that animal-based protein a little later in the day when your body's ready for it, not weighing you down first thing in the morning. So I could go on and on about this. I have many, many shows. So what I want to do is this. I want to link those up for you here today. So for all of the details, all the big takeaways, all the research, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 3065. We will link up all the previous shows on autophagy. We'll put a special link on that that does the search for you. Or you can do it on your own at stephencabral.com slash podcast. And you would just type in autophagy, but we'll do it for you. And then also we'll do all the shows on intermittent fasting, which there are about 30 or 40 of them. Those are at stephencabral.com slash IF. But head on over right now to stephencabral.com slash 3065. That'll have everything right there for you. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it demystified the difference between fasting and autophagy. And uh, as always, if it was helpful, do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, buddy. Appreciate you. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.